Hello there, Flegel Flogel here, and today I'm going to be doing a little list of, of course, my opinion, the top five best double albums of all time. I'm just going to say two things before I start. And number one is that I do remember that CDs nowadays has more memory capacity than the records I used to have. So what might have been a double album back then is technically one CD, but don't worry, the the double albums that was back then are going to be still in this list. And the second thing, of course, remember, this is my opinion, and if you don't like it, shut up. Now, I'm going to quickly note albums that very nearly got the list, but didn't. <laughs> These are The Luck Clash, London Calling, Physical Graffiti, Led Zeppelin, Godspeed You Black Emperor, Lift Your Skinny Fist, Like Antennas to Heaven, uh, Quadrophenia by The Who, and other albums that aren't on us like Tommy, Exile on Main Street, The River, and so on and so forth. But anyways, I think you're more interested in what is on my top five. So, let's start on with number five, and what have we got here? We have Pink Floyd's The Wall. This was released in the 30th of November, and is Pink Floyd's 11 al le uh, 11th album. Now, actually, I was very more interested in putting the Clash London Colin above this, but the main thing that got me having this on the list is just the amount of stuff that was put onto this. The huge concept album behind it, adapting a really good movie behind it, and was just... There's so much went into this kind of thing. There's a huge backstory to it, and you could probably have a massive book over it. But uh, the interesting thing of making it as an album is that uh, sticking with Pink Floyd's kind of concept, very dreary in a sort of scary kind of sense, and you definitely get this with many of the songs, like the creepy laughter at the end of Bring the Boys Back Home. But the re reason why I didn't really want to put this on my list in some ways is because of the thing that usually stops people not really liking double albums is that is a thing called fillers this is a thing where people might think that some songs on a well could be on any album but mostly a double album where they're just trying to fill the album up with songs that aren't as good and I agree it sort of works like this but it's an excuse of this for a concept album, so you have to listen to those things. But that's two things that are bad with it. I mean, you could have songs that are noted as fillers, in my opinion, like Vera, Bring the Boys Back Home, um, Goodbye Cruel World, and other songs that may be noted as fillers as well. Not only that, but just won't work as themselves as the two short, like Stop, Goodbye Cruel World, um, other filler could be like empty spaces but aside from these there's plenty of masterful songs that just go on Pink Floyd on here and is probably one of the best songs they've made uh, not only is the happiest days of our lives and the free partners of another Brit in the wall which I'm sick with people going on about when you say name me a Pink Floyd song the the pretty full of adrenaline and quite painful listening the way of one of my turns the pretty epic opera of the trial, waiting for the worms, uh, run like hell, hey you, and of course comfortably numb. So those songs mainly make this on the album, but of course the amount of concept on it, how they made a really good movie out of it, and yeah. Uh, shame that there was only one song by Gilmore, which is um, Young Lust, but still a good song but also got Richard Wright cut, uh, kicked out but that's also a bad thing but never mind number four is Jimi Hendrix Electric Ladyland this was released on the October the 25th 1968 and was sadly the third and last album by him uh, we could always look at the never coming uh, first raise of the new rising sun so this is really the last album by him um, a note of this is that it moves from the sort of poppy and easy listening side of Axis Boulder's Love and the debut Are You Experienced to a more harder, bluesier and sort of 
uh, the, the 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 double album reflects kind of on the difficulty of listening of how it's like an acid house kind of thing. In fact, it's like the fifteen minute voodoo child. There's also another extremely long song, nineteen eighty three. Um, and there's a more bluesier kind of look at, like, um, Let the Good Times Roll, uh, Have You Ever Been to Electric Ladyland, Navy Gypsy Eyes. Um, the Colonel Teens, obviously, probably the, mo the biggest famous song by him, which is the cover by Bob Dylan's song, which is off um, John Wesley Harden, uh, All Along the Watchtower, and... Uh, yeah, there's it's a bit sad of this new cover, Watchtower by Ed Sheeran. Yeah, they kind of killed it. Never mind. Um, it was such a good cover that Bob Dylan uh, nearly allowed him to have the rights that calling it his own song, and he said it may as well be his song since he said it was so much better than the original. I still like the other version, but I agree. I mean, the guitar in it, you can't complain. It's like one of the best things ever. Um... Songs I'm not too bothered about is uh, House Burning Down, Still Raining, Still Dreaming, but that's only because I think of it just as a second rendition of uh, Rainy Day Dream Away. But like I say, it contains the great cover, the epic cost cro the cross town traffic, and, and my favourite Jimi Hendrix song, Burning of the Midnight Lamp. So, great album. Number three is Captain Beefheart's Trout Mask Replica. Yes, um, I've already reviewed it, but to be honest, I'm not happy with the review that I made on my channel, but you'll see later in just a sec. Released on June the 16th, 1969, um, it was extremely innovative for its time, and is also extremely hard to grasp. It's the hardest album I've ever got into, and it took me about 12 listens to actually click with it, but it's just excellent. Um, I could talk ages about it, and the, the main reason about this is that there's 28 songs on it. But the best thing about this is that even with 28 songs, there's no filler, in my opinion. None. I'm sure there's songs I'm not too fond of, like Orange Claw Hammer, Old Father Play, Pina. But this doesn't mean that it's a filler in a sense that they're not trying. You can tell the amount of overlays and the amount of hard work that they put into it, which they did, they put months of training into it, and you can definitely see that. Um, Favourites, vocals-wise, is the Frownland, Dakau Blues, Elaguru, Hobo Changba, and the instrumentals... Is also really good, like the two hair pies and Dally's car. But when even when like with um so, uh, singing over it, really good instrumentally uh, with um, Veterans Day Poppy, the Blimp, which is actually originally going to be um, a song by the Mother's Invention with Frank Zappa, who helped uh, record it for um, Captain Beefheart since he was two in and he couldn't get a record label. And since he had his own, he could work for him and blah, blah, blah. And probably one of my favourites, Sweet Sweet Bulbs. And you have to listen to Pachuco Cadaver as well. You should listen to the second half and how really upbeat and lovely it is. Once again, really good album. Number two is actually one of the first double albums ever made. Blonde on Blonde, Bob Dylan. Made in May the 16th, 1966. Here, um... We'll have more instrumentation going on. Uh, this started around about the time of uh, Bringing It All Back Home and uh, Highway 61 Revisited, but it definitely works more on this kind of case. Their instruments would just add more about it instead of it just being about Bob's poetic lyrics, but it can be a more pleasant thing to the ear um, just listening back and not having to concentrate on the lyrics with the loads of horns and the electric guitars and the Hawaiian guitars and everything else that you'd expect like the harmonica and acoustic. Uh, songs that I don't really care for is obviously Five Believers and maybe Absolutely Sweet Mary and I'm also a bit shitty on the first song which is called Rainy Day Woman number 12 and 35 
I love the horns in it, but I think there's some pretty naff lyrics in it, if you have a look at them. But I Want You is beautiful. Uh, probably one of the more famous songs on them. And of course, Just Like a Woman is again one of the more famous songs. Well, I've Stuck Inside a Mobile for the Memphis Blues again, which is really, really good. And pretty epic, actually. And also another really epic, uh, kind of kick-ass kind of thing. Mostly like, Go Your Way and I'll Go Mine. Really soothing fourth time around. And the masterful close and tune, Sad-Eyed Lady of the Lowlands. One of probably my favourite Bob Dylan album as well. And so we have number one. Now many of you'll probably know what I'm gonna say here, but it deserves it in my opinion. The Beatles self titled oh you can't really say it, can you? The White Album. Made the twenty second of November nineteen sixty nine, I think, or eight, I don't know. Um, what we get here is the horrible conditions uh, that the Beatles members were having to work with, work on very long, stressful hours, and I sort of think it reflects on the songs, and you sort of get this kind of bleak atmosphere, and obviously there's some standout things that you can see, like a song dedicated, I'm so tired. And as of this, the although you do get a few filler songs like I think like why don't we do it in the road maybe cry baby cry birthday I think that sort of adds to the tension and sort of a charm to it it all flows extremely well obviously being on t number one on my list there's so many excellent songs uh, and I just think that George Harrison really starts to shine. Uh, even though it's like getting late there, and obviously you've got loads of great songs in uh, Abbey Road. Great songs like Long Long Long, uh, the pretty damn funky Savoy Truffle, uh, and of course Why well, My Guitar Gently Weeps, although I do think it's a tiny bit overrated, I still don't, agree, uh, don't think that it's bad or anywhere. And even Ringo, even though he made only two songs, which are both really good in my opinion, Don't Pass Me By is a really good song, although slightly weak lyrics. Favourites? I could say plentiful, can't I? Back in the USSR, Dear Prudence. Um, songs that are noted. I Will, Julia, uh, Helter Skelter. But uh, of course I have to mention The Revolution 9, which, looking at it into a different light, you have to admit, yeah, it's clever for its time. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you agree with my opinions. If you don't and you want to put a, a, a like an album in the comments section, uh, feel free, sure. Uh, of course, I don't know every album in the world, so yeah, sure, I might have missed one out or something like that. So, thank you very much for watching, and uh, have a good day or whenever you're watching this. Bye-bye.